Hi everyone, this is Jim. Uh, this is a different kind of video. I'm going to talk in this video about um, how I use uh, my uh, chess software to uh, analyze games. And the software I'm using now is Fritz15. I I've been asked uh, this question many times, what kind of setup I have, and I've even, even been asked to make a video on how to, how to use it. Um, and I always avoided it in the past because I was using this complicated setup that had uh, different pieces and, uh, and one of the pieces wasn't available. I was using Chessbase Lite, which is no longer available. But uh, recently I bought a copy of Fritz 15 and figured out how to do everything that I do uh, with those other tools using just Fritz 15. And so I thought I would finally uh, make this uh, overdue video. And I'll be talking about how I use it to analyze my own games and how I use it also when, uh, when doing the videos. So uh, Fritz 15, I bought it uh, directly from Chessbase. You can buy it online. Uh, the prices are in euros and uh, the price translated uh, to be about uh, 65 to $70 uh, in US money after, after the currency translation. Um, and, um, and then I, I just downloaded it and started running it. So it's it pretty simple. Um, there's two main ways into the program. One is to go directly to Fritz and the other is to go to the database uh, window first and you, and you need to know about both of these. So let's start with the database. So this is what the database window looks like and, uh, and Fritz 15 comes with a, a pretty big database. This database has uh, what two million games in it and uh, going back to 1851, the immortal game between uh, Anderson and uh, Kizaritsky. Um, the other database you see here, this is one that I had, um, well I bought um, the uh, Chessbase starter package and that's the big database that comes with the Chessbase starter package. So that shows up here but that's because I bought that separately. So when you buy Fritz 15 you just get uh, this beta database. And then uh, if you want to look at a game you can just uh, click on it. Uh, there's lots of things you can do with databases. You know, you can sort them according to players. Uh, right now, this is sorted by date. You can sort by tournament. Uh, you can look at openings. I don't use the database functions too much. I usually just use this as a way to get to the game. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So let's talk about. Uh, let's let's take a look at this first game in the database. You just double click on it. Wake up. Okay, and then it loads. Uh, it loads Fritz, and I killed the engine window right away because uh, when the chess engine runs, it, it interferes with the recording of the video. It's not a problem if you're just uh, using this, but if you're making a video like this, it's a problem. Uh, what it does is it uh, steals CPU cycles, and so there's clicks and glitches in the audio. Um, so, but it's, it records fine if you just turn the engines off. Um, so this is the uh, the Fritz window. And if we back up, let's kill this window, kill the database window. And if I just clicked on Fritz, the first option here, it would take me directly to the Fritz window. And um, and it remembers the last game I was looking at. So it shows the game, the immortal game that I had just loaded from the database previously. So, so both routes get you to the same place. And um, now let's talk about this setup. Um, this arrangement of windows is not the way it comes. It comes with, uh, let's, let's put a few more things on here. If you look at view, these are different things you can add. Um, it comes with a clock, for example. There, there will be a clock when you get it. Um, there might be, uh, there are other boards. Let's say I don't want to turn it on anything that will uh, cause trouble. But what I wanted to do was show how to uh, uh, arrange these windows. It's really easy to get rid of them too. There's there's all these little panes that show up here and, and you just click the X on the corner to get rid of it and it's gone so it's not a problem. And then you go to this view tab and click check the box to bring the window back. You can also uncheck it here um, and that also gets rid of it. But the X on the window gets rid of it. And then I wanted to talk about arranging it because it often doesn't come up in the most convenient arrangement. So you can uh, hold the mouse down, the mouse button down on the uh, top of any of these windows and then slide them around and then say you wanted to put it uh, at the bottom it would go there and you can make it larger and smaller by sliding this up and down. Now uh, let's say I meant to uh, this put it at the bottom of the whole window but suppose I wanted it to be at the bottom of this window but not at the bottom of that window or vice versa. So you can lift it up, 
just by holding down on the mouse button and scrolling around. And then whenever you're inside a window, this uh, allows you to place it to the right, to the left, to the top or the bottom. So you want it over here to the left and you have these big clocks over here to the left and that tiny little board there. Um, and then say you don't like it there, you can hold your mouse down again, just move it around. So these tabs here refer to the outer window. And when it you move it to any one of those four locations, it just pushes the other windows aside. Um, but if you scroll the mouse into a window, you'll see four more uh, arrow boxes that show up. And then this refers to locations within the window you're currently in. And if I scroll over to uh, this window, you'll see this showed up all of a sudden. That wasn't here. And then it pops up when you're in this window. And so I can place this uh, clock at the top of this window, the bottom, the side. So say I wanted it at the top, and then say I want to make it a little smaller. So that's how you can arrange these windows and get the arrangement you like. And uh, the arrangement I always go for is uh, the opening book here and the, uh, and the notation tab and opening book. They're both together, and then the uh, engine underneath when it's running. Um, one more thing about the appearance before I talk about the functions here. Um, the appearance uh, is controlled, let's see, the, the simplest way to get there is to right click inside this window and go to board design. And uh, you know, I choose these green boards on purpose because uh, it gives my, uh, my channel distinct, a distinct uh, look <laughs> when the little videos uh, icons pop up. The, the default uh, board is a maple board and you've probably seen this board uh, many times on other channels, that's just the default. Um, so let's go back to mine. So anyway, you can choose uh, different uh, characters and options, and uh, that, that's how you modify the appearance. So just right-clicking inside this window. If you right-click inside this window, what you can do here is, is change various options in that window. Um, the main one I use here is the font. I'm using a bigger font than default, and that's just for YouTube. So I have a nice big font that uh, it's easy to read in a YouTube video. By default, it comes with a smaller font. Okay, so what's in the Notation tab? Uh, let's start at the beginning of this game. Let's go back to the beginning. Um, so that's the first move. And uh, look at the opening book. And uh, this is uh, what's in the opening book. You have here, let's go. There's all these uh, tabs across the top here too. So the Home tab is where these uh, Move buttons are to move back and forth in the game. Uh, and the View tab is the one we were just looking at, allows you to uh, select uh, different windows to show up here. But let's go to the Home tab, and um, you can step through the game, and then you can take a look at, uh, after each move, what are the plausible uh, opening moves, what are the moves that are in the opening database, and, uh, and then what's the expected outcome, or actually this is not expected outcome, this is the actual outcomes of the games in the database, so it's kind of a statistical evaluation of this move. And so the move F4, the King's Gambit, is the next move. And uh, let's show an example here of how these evaluations can tell you a little bit of something about the position. If you look at the uh, top move here, Knight F3 is the main move. White plays Knight F3 to attack the E-pawn. And then um, that's uh, a move where white has an advantage. White wins more often than white loses, but there's a big percentage of draws. After the next move, f4, white still has an advantage, although not as pronounced, actually. And uh, But there's much fewer draws, so this is the kind of move you might play if you want to win. You don't mind losing. You want a decisive outcome. You're not happy with a draw. You can play a move like f4, and that steers the game in that direction. That's a sharper direction, and you can tell it just from looking at these uh, at these bars here, how the game is going. So we can play on a few moves, see if uh, we leave the opening book. Queen to h4 check, okay. King to f1. So this is the bishop's uh, gambit here. And uh, okay, and there's some weird counter gambit, b5, uh, hitting the bishop. Um, oh, and uh, Fritz, by the way, is, is putting those arrows on the board automatically. I didn't, uh, I didn't do that, so. Uh, I'll probably turn that off before I uh, before I start using this to make videos because I don't like arrows popping up uh, that I don't put there. Let's see, can I draw an arrow? That's a question. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, so I can draw an arrow here. 
So that's good. Yeah, okay, so Alt gives me a green arrow. Okay, so I'm still learning things about this new software. I have to figure out how to turn those automatic arrows off so they won't distract from the arrows that I want to draw. So that's the, uh, the notation tab and the opening book. And in the notation tab, you can make comments. Um, so if you go to insert, you can insert text after this move. And uh, I use this a lot. Um, so the word gambit showed up there. <laughs> That's maybe didn't, not so obvious that showed up. But uh, anyway, um, I use this a lot, for example, when, I'm, uh, uh, when I have a position where I want to remind myself to uh, ask for a, uh, a tactical, uh, uh, where, where there's a tactical quiz opportunity. See, I think there's a tactic here. I don't want to give the tactic away by actually putting uh, the notation the uh, the line in the notation tab, but I'll put the the word tactic here as a reminder to me to to let you know that uh, there's a tactic. And you should try and guess the answer here. And then um, let's see what was played here. Let's go back to the home page. Play the next move. The next move was c6. So instead of c6, suppose uh, I want to play knight f6 or knight c6. Then it automatically starts to um, build a variation. And uh, it remembers these, and you can save these uh, when you're done. So I will come back to that point uh, in a bit. Um, so what have I talked about here? I've talked about the home view, insert. This allows you to insert various annotations. You can also like, give a question mark. So that put a question mark on that, uh, um, on that uh, move, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, I didn't talk about those tabs, and I won't. And then I talked about the View tab, um, and that just controls what's showing. Um, so the one other tab I wanted to talk about here on the top is the Engine tab. And this is how you add and remove uh, kibitzers. And let's add a kibitzer. So um, the, uh, it comes with Fritz 15, which is actually a pretty good uh, uh, chess engine. They got uh, Vasik. Rajlich to uh, work on it, and he's the guy who wrote Ribka, so experienced uh, designer of chess engines. And, um, and then there's these free engines that I downloaded. So um, to I can't cancel that. To um, get a free engine and configure it is not too hard. You, you, you have to download the binary from the website. The Stockwish Fish website will have an executable. Uh, you have to make sure that you're either 64-bit or 32-bit, and it's appropriate for your operating system. And then you go to this tab over here. It says Create UCI Engine in the Engine tab. You go to this button, Create UCI Engine. And then here, there's a Browse button that lets you go and find uh, where the engine is. You can tell it where the engine is, and then there may be some parameters, depending on the engine you select. And then you hit OK, and, and after that, that engine will just show up on your list of kibitzers. And then when you add that engine, it'll show up in a window. And uh, it might not be in this window. I mean, the window might show up over here to the left or on top. But uh, it's like any other window. You can move it around and snap it into a particular location. These are docking windows, they're called. And, um, and it remembers that. So the next time you run it, it comes back to the same location. The other uh, key feature I, um, I use here is, um, is this, um, these plus and minus buttons here. So let's uh, start the engine going again, and then let's hit plus. And what it does is it adds another line. So now the chess engine is, is evaluating and looking at the top three moves. Hit plus again, now it's looking at the top four moves. Hit plus again, it's, it's looking at the top five moves. So when it's looking at more moves, it can't search as deep, right? This does uh, use up some of its uh, attention <laughs> to look at all those different moves. But uh, I still find this to be very useful. I usually go through a game looking at at least uh, the top four or five moves. As well as, you know, I go through the game looking at the opening book and looking for uh, suggestions from the, the uh, opening book as to what I should be playing at each point. And then... Um, you know, I'll also use the chess engine. Even in the openings, I'll use the chess engine to look at look for moves that are not in the opening book, or look at uh, independent uh, view of what uh, the evaluation of those moves ought to be. And um, the advantage of looking at multiple moves here is that uh, 
sometimes you have uh, really sharp positions where there's only a single move and you have to play it uh, or you're just going to lose and uh, and the other other moves lose and and that's a really sharp position and you might not like that kind of position you might prefer to go for a position where you have like here there's one two three four five all the top five moves seem to give reasonable outcomes although only knight c3 gives a a positive advantage to white at this position um, according to the chess engine and um, so it's useful just to get that kind of landscape. Is this a sharp position where there's only one or two really exciting moves and <laughs> one or two necessary moves and all others lose? Or is it the kind of position where you have a lot of choice and you can just use your uh, your intuition and your calculation to try and figure out what's going on? Um, and um, it's also um, an advantage. Say you get uh, later on in the game. You're not, you're not in the opening, but you're just playing through the game and uh, you're following in some line and you find yourself in a box where it looks like you're, you're just getting killed and the chess engine keeps saying, oh, things are fine, things are fine. Uh, it often turns out, you know, somewhere along the line, there's like one move that saves you and then all other moves lose. And so unless you spot that one move, you really don't want to go down that line. So um, so it's useful to uh, to step through these lines and look for positions where, uh, where you have a number of different options. And... Um, Say you're in a position where there's a couple of different moves that lead to an advantage, but one of them is some crazy tactical line that, that only a, a computer or a real genius could follow, and another is a more ordinary move that uh, keeps some kind of uh, edge for you. You might choose to go for the more ordinary move. Um, so it's useful to have that kind of information, those, those multiple lines of evaluation. I, I use that a lot. Okay, let's kill that engine. And... Um, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Yeah, so that's how about about this this particular window. So that's how you you go through um, in the opening book. Let's we can go back to the beginning. Um, step backwards. I guess the quickest way to get back to the beginning is to go to the notation tab and click on the first move, then go to the openings book. Um, so you can. Um, let's give an example of uh, using the chess engine to evaluate something. So, yeah, say you want to know about this b5 gambit uh, and how it compares to other alternatives that black has. It looks like black has a number of moves that could be played here. And the chess engine thinks uh, this b5 gambit is, uh, okay, what, 60%? That's six wins, four losses. A very sharp <laughs> move. Um, but it's only 10 games. So keep in mind that, um, you know, the, the validity of the statistics really depends on the number of games. Get up here to 50 games. And it uh, looks like G5 and uh, black has some kind of advantage with G5. So, so there's a couple of moves you might play. Why don't we turn on the chess engine and uh, so engine add kibitzer and see what it thinks about those two moves, G5 versus B5. And uh, you see that, uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, B5 and G5 are not even on the list. What was the top move here? The top move is G5. Okay, the top move from the chess engine's point of view is d6, which is the second move here. Um, and then, but I was more interested in this b5 move. So let's go to b5 and place that on the board and see how the evaluation changes. So yeah, it still seems to be okay for black. So you can say, you know, between the fact that it's played and, and black has a reasonable score and the fact that the chess engine doesn't find any refutation, then you can you can play that move with some kind of confidence that uh, well your chances are at least even there you have you have as good a chance as anyone <laughs> to play that move okay and then um, I wanted to talk more about uh, loading and and uh, um, and saving games so um, we looked at the engine uh, menu we looked at the insert menu that was for editing editing the notations here and we looked at the home menu going back and forth the very first one over here is the file menu and this lets you open games but the way you open a game is kind of funny. So let's hit open. Open database is what you have to do. And then it gives you these databases. So we're back to the database window, which is why I started there kind of. It's because you're going to have to uh, navigate through this window in any case. So here you are in the database window. The database you have open is this uh, big database with, not big database, the other database, the one that comes with the um, program, this database of 2 million games, the Fritz 15 database. Um, here, there's an open window that's probably open. Yeah, there's an open from the file menu, and there's also an open 
uh, icon up here at the top. But let's do it from the menu, open. And then uh, let's go to the temp directory where I, I created some files here. And, um, and uh, you have to change the type. I always download my files as uh, PGN files. That's a common notation. And uh, for example, if you play on ICC or if you play on LeechS, or any of these other servers, they will give the option, give you the option of downloading a game in PGN format. So let's switch this to PGN, and then we'll see some PGN files here. Um, and then here's the games that I played against uh, Goliath. Uh, this is one I just uh, played and uploaded a video on. And here, let's kill the engine for it. <laughs> it causes trouble. Yeah, it seems to want to put the engine on when you when you bring up a new a new uh, uh, game or new database. Let's see. Uh, you know the appearance changed there. I wonder what happened. Let's go back to the board design and fix that. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, maybe it remembers uh, what what the board design was the last time I was looking at the game. I don't know. Um, so this is the game I played against uh, Goliath recently. This was a, um, a Smith Mora Gambit. And um, I declined the gambit. There's other ways to play it. So, for example, I can go to the opening book here and say, well, the top choice here is d takes c3. And we can look at the, uh, the opening line here, knight takes. And then I'll play uh, e6, knight of 3, a6, knight uh, setting up this formation like a con Sicilian, bishop c4, knight to c6. Or Taimanov Sicilian, I guess now. Castles. Knight G E seven. Anyway, you you get the idea. There's a, there's a line there that you can play through, and then that uh, notation has been added here. So let's add a comment here. Uh, go to Insert Text After Move. Um, call this the main line. Okay, and so now we've we've uh, added a comment to this file. Uh, we can save this, and this is what I do. I go through and annotate these games with the chess engine running, so I find interesting things, and then um, I save that, and then I can um, later uh, do a video on the game uh, without having to use the chess engine, because like I said, the chess engine causes some problems with um, with the recording. Um, it's fine, it's not something you need to do, but it, it's sometimes it's useful to annotate these games so you can print them out and show them to other people. So let's go back to the file menu. Let's see, let's go to home. Okay, and file. Um, so let's save this. And you can save it, and it'll actually save a new version into the same database. It'll update that database with a new version of the game. Uh, or you can save it to a new file. And then you can write down all these things about the game and uh, who annotated it. I usually give credit to uh, Stockfish here. And then OK. And then that's saved. And then if you kill this window and look at the database window, you'll see that there's a new version of that game. And that's the one that I just annotated. If I double click on it, it'll come up with my annotations. So that's how you can uh, save an annotation. So I think, let's see, I've covered everything except for one. Let's see, ranging the game, ranging the windows, opening. Engine annotations. Yeah, so the last one I wanted to talk about is Blunder Check. Yeah, I said I wasn't going to talk about any more of these tabs, but there's one more tab here I'll talk about. It's called Analysis. Um, and of course, there's, there's lots more features I haven't gotten into, so you're free to explore. But these are the main ones I use. And um, I don't use Blunder Check so much anymore, but I used to use it a lot um, before I got into the habit of just going through the game move by move with the chess engine on. Uh, it was when I had less time. And it's very handy. What you can do is you can enter a game. So um, I haven't talked about entering a game. I'll come back to that. You can enter a game, and then you can run Blender Check on it. And it goes to the game. Um, it starts at the back. It starts at the last move of the game and works towards the front and points out moves that are blenders. And it takes a long time. So it's the kind of thing you just set up and let it run overnight. And then in the morning, you can check out uh, all the mistakes you made in that game. And it's just a handy way to uh, to get to the key the key uh, uh, problems in the game, the key mistakes that that change the course of the game um, without having to go through move by move. So it's kind of a, a shorthand way of getting to the key points in the game. 
and um, and I found that very useful. Now that I have more time, uh, you know, I just go through front to back. I go through from the beginning, like I said, using the opening book and with the chess engines turned on to find to find my mistakes going forward. But uh, that's a very handy way to find them. Um, yeah. So the last thing was um, saving a game. Oh, entering a new game. So um, when you're in this Fritz window, so you're at the home position. Um, yeah, the home tab has new game. So you click on new game, you kill the engine because you don't want it to constantly be second guessing your moves. This is how you enter a game, how I enter a game after um, having played one in a tournament. You know, I have the score sheet and I just play through the games. And um, a very handy keyboard shortcut to know is uh, control F, F for flip. Uh, control F flips the board. So say I was uh, white in this game, so I want to look at it from the white point of view and we can put a few moves out and then we can do a blunder check on it and then after I'm all done I can go to file save and now um, I'll have to enter oh cancel that it still thinks I want to save to Goliath so I do save game as and then I can give it um, a new name and uh, I can save it as type PGN I don't have to save it as a um, chess based database because I just keep everything as PGN and then I've got the, a saved copy of that game. So um, that's all the features that I use out of uh, Fritz. And um, I think that's pretty much everything you need to use. And as I, I um, said, everything comes with Fritz 15 now, except for um, these other kibitzers, which are free. You can download those for free and uh, configure them if you want to add them. But the, uh, the default engine you get is also uh, pretty good as well. So that concludes this video. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please, please feel free to ask them <laughs> below. I'd be happy to uh, answer them and uh, uh, let me know what you think. See you guys later. Bye.